It was a 3 a.m. Waffle House date over winter break during my junior year of high school that pretty much sealed the deal. Of course, for a long time before then, I'd always known that I felt a certain way about him. He was the kind of kid who made you believe you were truly special when he talked to you or shared something with you. He made obscure references to a series of unfortunate events, always had a new skateboarding-related injury to show off, and how could anyone forget that vibrant blue hair? His devil-may-care persona was endearing, confidence exuded from every pore. But he wasn't all just punk rock and funky hair. He was charming, sincere, and brimming with wit. One of the first times he texted me for something non-yearbook class related, he sent me the YouTube link to a song by The Weaker Thens, written from the perspective of a cat. It's kind of hard not to fall in love with someone who sends you a really good song sung by a metaphorical feline, just because he knew you'd like it. It quickly became kind of hard not to fall in love with him, period. It can be painful to look back on my early memories, mainly because he was close. Nine hours of I-95 has separated us now for almost a year since he started working at camp in Pennsylvania, save for a few visits and holidays. A million different things have happened in the year and a half since that first night, but there was something so magical about that beginning to me. The breathless cold, the sidelong glances, the jokes exchanged over dead of night breakfast platters. In many ways, it felt just like a movie. We were just two kids who had always had trouble loving ourselves, suddenly falling in love with each, with each other. Everything was still so new and sacred and exciting. I think that newness can only be found at the beginning of something, because later, it may still be good, but it becomes something else. In the beginning, you're still being gentle. It's like you've got this beautiful, precious, fragile thing in your hands and all you want to do is look at it. And later, if you're lucky, it hardens and becomes less fragile. That precious thing becomes rough around the edges, which is crucial to its survival. As our relationship progressed past the first four months that encompassed our first kiss, Sadie Hawkins, my 17th birthday, his graduation, and our first prolonged goodbye, that precious thing that we shared became weathered, forced to withstand the pressure of distance. There have been fights, bitter phone calls, doubts about the future. People believe our love to be a perfect fairy tale as it appears in sun-drenched, touchy-feely Instagram posts, but it's been hard. No matter how much we care about each other, the distance always seems to hurt someone. We tried to revisit the same Waffle House this past winter break, thinking we could make it into a tradition the way we decided to make it a tradition to see Rocky Horror every year around Christmas time, rice throwing, underwear run and all. However, when we pulled up to the dingy facade of the all-night breakfast chain, we found the building vacant and permanently darkened, not a soul inside. It was no big deal at the time. We mapped another location and ate our waffles elsewhere. But looking back, it felt like the true end of something. Long distance is hard. It's one of the most difficult, trying things a couple can withstand, especially a couple trying to navigate the immediacy of young adulthood. But it is what it is at this point. I remember when we met up in Washington, D.C. last fall, I was touring my future school. We went traipsing around the National Mall late at night when nobody else was around, and he decided to lick the Washington Monument just for the principle of it. Nobody else is going to lick the Washington Monument with me. Nobody else is going to love the color yellow so much just because it's my favorite color. Nobody else is going to marathon countless episodes of Kitchen Nightmares with me and be endlessly entertained. This is it. The big time. The real thing. Our Waffle House remains abandoned, but it holds our origin story. A story of mixed CDs and Scott Pilgrim vs. The World quotes and casual walks to the parking lot together after fourth period. And in many ways, he's a superhero to me. Not just in the expert way he can maneuver himself on a skateboard or the fact that there's a light inside of him that never seems to go out, but because he makes me so unapologetically happy. That's his superpower. The distance will ebb and flow with time and college and summer jobs, but the love between us persists. And I think that, no matter what happens, it always will.